So ways to access ARI, right? This is what I was talking about. These are all the libraries. These are actually taken, sourced from the asterisk wiki. You can see there's Node.js, Python, PHP, C Sharp, Java, C++, and Ruby. And I even looked at the C++ one, for all, and if anybody knows C++, and it's still pretty updated. I mean, it was updated about 12 days ago. Um, like we said originally, you can access it with basic HTTP request, basic auth, which just is just you know connecting to a URL, and it prompts up that username password, and you type in the ARI username and the ARI password. Uh, WebSockets. Uh, we can even have James here show you guys. I wish Dan Jenkins was in here. But we can even have uh, James show you guys connecting to the asterisk WebSockets from Chrome. And he's able to get events, subscribe to events. He can do some other basic actions there, too. Yeah, I got slapped yesterday for it. <laughs> But I want you to show them, because it's kind of cool that you can do that. So why Node.js over PHP? We say field tested mother approved because we've been using it. Everybody's been using it. If you've been a web developer, you've been using what is essentially Node, right? Uh, if you guys don't know, Node.js is it's the V8 engine which runs uh, JavaScript in Chrome, right? And the guy took it and took it off of there and uh, continues to update it from Chrome. But they, they work together, like Google and Chrome, um, on that. Uh, the guy, so there's a group that runs it, and uh, like I said, it's the V8 engine from um, Chrome that does all the JavaScript parsing in Node.js, right? So um, like I said, uh, version 8.6, documentation's really great. I mean, if, like I said, if you know JavaScript, you know Node. Uh, ease of use, natively non-blocking. It's a similar web technology to PHP. They usually go hand in hand. If you do PHP, you know JavaScript, right? If you know JavaScript, you probably know PHP. What I mean by a blocking language, this is a simple little function here. By the way, I rewrote yours if you didn't know. So, um, <clears throat> and what we see here is there's a while statement, right? When you say while true, that just goes on forever, right? And I'm echoing and I'm sleeping. You sleep means I'm sleeping in milliseconds. So I'm sleeping 100 milliseconds. And what happens is, is there's other code down there where I say taking a break, then I use sleep for two seconds and two seconds later. But as you can see in PHP, it never runs, right? because of the structure of this, right? It's just interval, 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 because it's stuck in that while loop up there, right? In Node, you can get around that kind of situation because we use set interval, which is just like that while loop, right? So I'm doing set interval, console log interval, right? Every 100 milliseconds, but you can see I actually reach taking a break, and then I have another sleep here because, like I'm saying, async and await, they're synchronous functions in, in Node, right? In the newer versions of Node. Um, they're basically promises. If you guys want to know what promises are, just check it out online. You can say, what is a promise? And there's great tutorials and articles, right? But this is what Node has, right? So I can get taking a break, and I'm still running the interval. And then two seconds later, I hit that process exit, right? There's no blocking in this situation, which is really important in uh, dial plan applications, OK? Going to code quickly over FreePBX module basics. What can a FreePBX module do? can do all this and more, right? We can modify a splice, which means insert your code into the middle of dial plan anywhere in FreePBX, uh, generate new dial plan, modify the admin user GUI, which means that you can add new functionality to the admin GUI. You can insert lines. You can insert rows. Um, in the user side, you can add widgets. You can add your own functionality in there as well. Uh, connect over AMI. So every time FreePBX loads, it actually connects to asterisk over AMI, unless it's told not to. But that's how we're able to access certain parameters in FreePBX, especially like paging. In FreePBX, free PBX, the way paging works is when a call comes into the system, we actually connect to AMI and ask Asterisk what the user agent is. And then we look it up in a quick user agent table. And then that's how we're able to know how to page the phone, because every phone has a different way of paging it so that it actually does auto answer. OK? Can add CLI commands. So if you guys know FreePBX, there's like AMP portal and FW console. Uh, through modules, you can also add CLI commands. Start processes, install applications, add AGIs, which are files that Asterisk can launch on the command line. Um, add sounds as well. It puts it in the correct sounds folder in the correct language as well. Um, can be installed manually. Our modules can be installed manually through URL, GitHub, Tarball, Zip, whatever you can think of. I think it, it supports BZ2 as well. Um, Basic anatomy of a free PBX module, they all live in the modules folder in free PBX. And every module is named by its raw name. So every folder will have the raw name. And this is just a quick one. This is trunk status. But we've got the, the assets, the CSS, the JavaScript, right? Just how the, the overall view of that looks. Uh, install, license, module. 
uh, page trunk, this page.trunks.php. I mean, this is like just a quick overview, right? We have this all in our wiki, but I want to actually try to get to the actual fun stuff here. So um, this is what the module XML looks like. FreePBX is based all on XML just because that was what was available in 2005 when the project started. Um, it originally started as INI &I files, and then it moved to module XML. So that's basically the definition of a module is in the module.xml in all the, the module folders, okay? The BMO class is what we added in FreePBX to support, mo um, what do I want to say, class, OOP, OOO, right? Um, and basically before this, FreePBX was all procedural. Um, sorry if I'm throwing out a lot of programmer terms at you guys, like I hope that's okay. Uh, we'll get to the kind of the fun stuff in a second here where James wrote some, an actual ARI module. Uh, that actually uses free PBX. Um, but basically, this is a quick overview. Like I was saying, this is what we do now. We put everything in classes. It makes it really easy to use free PBX for us because you can just call a class anywhere in free PBX. Before, every single module that was on your system was exposing functions to everything. So everything was procedural uh, about five years ago, which means that there were probably thousands of functions that were exposed every time you loaded a page, which if you're only using one function, that's really terrible. All right, so that's why we went to this form where it's only loading what it needs to load when you're on that module. And we're saying, like, do you have to write a module for free PBX to be able to use free PBX, right? So let's say you have an ARI application idea, right? Well, now you're thinking, I have to go and write a module for free PBX. But you don't actually have to do that. You can use Bootstrap, which is what we're going to go through really quick here. Or this other module we wrote for Node, right, which just basically hooks into FreePBX. It figures out everything about FreePBX. It connects to the database. It connects to the AMI. And then it also connects, well, it also gives you some, some help, right? It gives you all the configuration settings and advanced settings. And then it also gives you an AMI connection. That's what the Node one does that we wrote, right? The same with the PHP one. Um, let me come over here really quick. So we're saying you need a module if you want to hook, configure the module from the bin GUI, you want to hook into other components, right? Such as hooking into FW console start or stop or FW console anything, okay? The one at the bottom where you want to maintain an internal KV store, you can actually do with most of our, uh, if just a, the bootstrap thing that I'm talking about that I'll show really quick. So I know this is probably hard to see, but this is an example of bootstrap that we call it. This is in PHP. Um, basically, you just put this in a script and it runs, right? So. It's basically include etc freepbx.conf, and then you can see our FW, or sorry, our freepbx, come over here, ARI user and ARI password are important, right? And then what he's actually doing here, this is James code, is he's connecting to the asterisk ARI against localhost with that username and password, right? And he's just getting asterisk info right here. Do you have this on your computer? Yep. To run? Yeah, we should show them that too. Um, and he's just getting, that's just the simple asterisk information, you're getting the settings from FreePBX, but then after you're getting the settings and connecting to FreePBX, you're kind of just ignoring FreePBX. So you could write your own ARI application that way. Um, the other way we do it is through Node, like we were saying, right? So this is our package right here uh, that provides um, the same interface that Bootstrap does, so it provides a database access, AMI, um, configuration parameters that you can get from uh, advanced settings that you set in there. We provide all of those, okay? So, whether part of a module or standalone, a node module can access information through FreePBX client library. So what we're doing here is just require FreePBX. That's just a module in node. And then we just hit FreePBX connect. And then once we're in the then statement, we have everything that I talked about, right? And we'll show you guys this on James's computer. And there's also, we have a module um, that is in that wiki down there. And we'll run this for you guys too, where it basically simply creates a module in FreePBX. You just tell it what you want it to do. It's hard to see over here, so I'll bring it up on my screen. Um, but you just go through some, some, some simple questions, and then you come out with the module on the other end, right? OK, so now let's do this. You want to get your computer? Yep. So first of all, show you guys this. So our little module, oh, yeah. Let's do this. And then this. 
Uh, I think you guys can see that. Do that. OK. <clears throat> so first of all, our little module generator I was showing you guys earlier looks like this. So I just say, do you want to create a free PBX module or a UCP module? If you guys don't know what UCP is in free PBX, it's the user control panel. So you can create just an admin module or a free PBX module, right? Um, or both, right? So let's just do free PBX, right? I want to say what my, you know, just do this, asterisk con, right? Just say what my module's name is. It has to be a raw name, uh, no spaces. Um, I just say what my module's version is. We're going to start at 14. My description. License, where I want it to show up in the menu items. Uh, let's do this. And then it just basically says, everything about my module in a short description, I have to type yes. It's going to now link it and install it on the system, which is what it's doing right now. Um, and then I'll be able to go and show you guys. Let's do this, get out of this. And come over here. Doing it live. Just unlock this really quick once it's done here. And it's almost done. And you can show them that to start with that PHP one that you had. It just shows the asterisk info. I'm actually going to quit out of this. Oops. This is just so I can get into the session. OK. So we go over to module admin. Hopefully, it will be in there under settings once the whole page loads. Woo, slow internet. Yeah, right there, UCP Astrocon, right? Uh, so that's what I just created right now. And it's already in FreePBX, so I could install it right now. It wouldn't really do anything, but I could install it right now if I wanted to. So, right? We can do the right, yeah. Yep, if you selected, I think I selected FreePBX, but it still says UCP. We just probably need to fix that. But you could do both. You could do single, whatever, yes. No, you actually selected UCP. Oh, I did, OK. Sadly, I can't remember, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, it's right here, right? So it actually is a UCP module, right? So it'd show up in UCP if I wrote some code for it. Right now, it's just a skeleton, so there's nothing really in it. So now I'm going to switch to James's computer, because he has all the cool ARI demos that he's been working on. And let me get out of this. Do you have a HDMI? You do. Okay. I don't have a cool built-in one. I'm not, I'm not that high up. All right. <clears throat> All right. Not that I was ready for this. Let's just do this. I thought I was ready for it. Yeah, the PHP one? Nope. Um, we're going to do it oh, live. We can do this. All right. Where are we at? So this one that James is doing right here, or I probably have to make your screen a little bit better. Yes, it's nano. Don't judge me. <laughs> here, do this. Sorry, guys. I just want to make it so you guys can see. So basically, what he did here was, I don't mean to take over your session. See, he's judging me already, threatened him. You guys can ignore all that license stuff. He likes to put them on there. But um, basically, what we've got here, right? Sorry, the red doesn't really show very well. But and down just to here, go to the license stuff. If you, they say if you put uh, if you put put code up on GitHub and you don't apply a license to it, you're showing off. So in order for anybody to ever touch anything you put up there legally, you have to license it to them to touch it. Right. So nobody can touch anything you put up unless you apply some sort of license to it. 
But what's important here, right? We've got uh, the, the include freepbx.conf, the, free, the fpbx ARI user and ARI password. Uh, if you guys go to advanced settings, you can see there's like a little section that says asterisk rest API, I believe. And if you look in there, it's got that enable yes or no, right, that I talked about earlier. And then it's also got, you can see, free PBX user and a randomly generated password for your system. We use that for our applications and your applications. It's a simple connect way, like quick way to get a username and password. So you don't have to go generate your own user and password, right, in ARI. So what we do is we get those two. We take those username and passwords. We use PEST as a simple library in um, PHP that's really old and it's been there for a while. It's just basically uh, a REST API. Send our username and password. And then we ask asterisk for its own info, right? This is off asterisk ARI, right? And so then we JSON decode it, and that's what we're going to show right now. So this is the code there. And we can just get out of this here. I'm going to show off my skills here. I am going to exit Vim. So now we're going to execute it. I mean, that was, that was kind of oh, here, let's anticlimactic. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to actually have it do something more than that. <laughs> okay, so you got that. There was not even an applause. <laughs> because you said, I connected. <laughs> Woo! So we're going to do this. So if I scroll up here, you can see all this information from Asterisk, right? Because we connected right to the ARI. So this is really simple, basic, right? It doesn't control any dial plan. It's, at the, it's the most basic form of the Asterisk API. But we can get important information from Asterisk, like who built Asterisk, right? That's what mock build is. All of our uh, Asterisk versions are built through Jenkins. So it's always going to be mock build as the user there. Um, you can see the version of Asterisk. You can see their little unique identifier here. And the default language of Asterisk. And you know, last startup time, last reload time. That could be helpful if you guys want. You know, uh, but this is like the most basic form, like we were saying. So, what else do you want to show here? Um. <clears throat> Sorry, and you're a really huge font now. That's fine. So, one of the other things, again, going in and not making fancy, no node, no no doing anything, you know, no voodoo, um, accessing um, ARI at simplest form. I just got to figure out where I put it. Hang on, hang on. I, I, I wrote this like a week ago, and I forgot what I called it. <laughs> I want you to show them what you wrote this week. Well, that's one of, one of the things I wrote this week. <laughs> Is, Is it, it that? It's the trunk status. No, that was my if this and that connector. Do you call it trunk status? Trunk status, yeah. Oh, look at that. So we have this feature. Maybe it, maybe it uninstalled during other things. Mm, OK, let's go over to module admin. Because if not, then just show them the blacklist one that you were doing. Yeah, there's nothing trunk on here. Uh, no, I didn't call it trunk status. There we go. So back to it's um, going on the on, on the original kind of um, simple no frills access. This right here basically goes in, asks ARI for all the endpoints, shoves them into a table, like nothing fancy. It's it's like a, a few lines of code. I'll show you in a second. But all this is is generating a table from the endpoints, and it's giving you a status plus or minus. Again, something you could use from that other, the demo previously, you could pull endpoints like this and have some sort of alert script when your endpoint goes down or your trunk goes down, you know, watching specific endpoints. And this is, like you said, this is also actually against asterisk ARI as well. So uh, it's, it's querying asterisk directly for that information. The way we used to do this kind of stuff is through AMI and query AMI, and then AMI has to send events back out of order, and it's kind of hard to parse, even through the PHP stuff. So the, the asterisk rest interface makes it extremely simple for us to get this information. And are you going to? Um, and so right there, this get endpoints here at the bottom. Is and this do, the... yeah, control plus. Yep. This get endpoints, that's the extent of what it does. So it's, it's calling, it's, it's basically just sending a call and asking for that ARI endpoints, which it comes back in, in, uh, in JSON, which is called by an AJAX function up here. Um, 
So the AJAC handler, so that, and that's all it is. It's sending back, and we have a, we have a um, bootstrap tables library we use for our front end, and it just parses that out and knows what to do with it. It's sort of right. Magical. So if you took what James wrote here for this module, right? This ARI endpoints is important here. If I copy this and I come back over, and we go back into just that status.php, and we just change this one line of code. Because again, this is like all that's using from FreePBX is the AST or the ARI username and password. So we just come in here and we just do this endpoints, right? Now if I run it, there's all the endpoint information, right? Just raw. So you can see technology PJ, PJ SIP resource, that's the extension name in FreePBX, state online. It's really simple to parse. State online, state online, state online, right? And these are just trunks right here, because you know this by the resource, right? The resource, that's a trunk name, technology SIP. So even SIP's in there. I'm sure IAX, all of them are in there. Um, and this one right here, DPMA endpoint, right? Offline, OK? But you can see how simple that is to parse. If I come back into this simple file, we just got this line of code is all we changed to get endpoint status. And like James was saying, you could run that in Node. You could run it in a never-ending PHP, Ruby, Perl, whatever you want. And you could see instantaneously when your trunks go up or down, which is an important feature to a lot of people, right? So. All right, next thing I wrote, which I didn't quite get finished. Um, oh, sorry, you're still in Vim here, too. If you ever want to know the difference between a, a senior software engineer and a software engineer, <laughs> it's think. the use of Vim. All right. Um, So since the, the front end of it's not done, we'll just come over here to the back end. Um, Are you trying to get to your other machine? Or? I'm, I gotta, oh, I'm opening up a CLI. Oh. We'll show you guys the code of this in a second here. So if you run it, if you're just running it without, so if you run it, when you're doing this, you should run it as a daemon. Obviously, you're not going to be looking at it. It's something that's going to run in the background. And with ARI, if you're running you know, something like this, that, uh, that ends up being a, um, a stasis application that you're going to call from the dial plan. It has to be running. It's not something you launch and, and run. It's always there. Um, advantage to this over a, uh, an AGI is so you have inbound calls coming in. And you're hitting an AGI, so this is fine for what you know, 10, 100, a couple hundred calls maybe. Um, but when you're doing AGIs, every call that comes in spawns a process. So you have 100 calls coming in in a minute. That means that you've spawned 100 AGI, AGI processes in the minute. Where you take something like this, you run it through, um, you run it through stasis. You have one process running, and then you have 100 things going into one process. So instead of like blowing up with 100 processes, you have a single process that's managing everything. And so this is what it looks like if you just run it from the command line. Um, if, you, if you run it through, um, you should, if, if you're running it in general, you should just background it and let it always run. Um, and then he's just connecting to asterisk on the bottom part. <clears throat> Does it show? All right. Yeah, I probably just want to maybe increase the size on that too. Yeah. And so if I go in here and I do ARI show apps, you can now see, you'll see the blacklist on there because when I show you the code, you'll see I declare it's blacklist is the app name. And then when you call, um, oh, because I'm not hooked in, so it's not even going to show on the, on the display. Um, so when you, when you call stasis, so you'll call stasis and then the app name, so it'd be in this case stasis blacklist. Um, then it knows to send stuff over to the... Right, and if we do this, sorry to interrupt you, James. We'll see, I'll just show you guys the when, when stasis. You can just see right now, blacklist disconnected on asterisk, and then when we run it again, blacklist connected. Because that's the stasis app, which is the ARI app. So, so. I can't do the call-in because I, I didn't get the hook in for the dial plan. Um, so we'll go over to the code and... Let's do some coding really quick here. Did you remove the, the dial plan hook? 
I never put the dial plan look at it. I just kind of had it manually entered in. Oh, that's fine. You could just keep doing that. Um, so to go over this code really quick and just kind of show you what the, the gist of what I've done. Now, this is a stylistic choice. I just kind of used events to, um, to keep things clean in my head. I think it, it may make for a more confusing co uh, flow, but it makes, for, it makes it look cleaner in my head. Um, so with this, I, put, uh, I use the event admitter. And this is built in. This is uh, nothing you have to install for that package-wise. Free PBX, he showed you the little, um, the little uh, JSON blob that gives you your requirements. Uh, same with ARI. Fetch is a, um, is a library I'm using to do HTTP requests because it has promises, which means that um, you know, I can do kind of actions in order and handle failures. Uh, so we do the free PBX connect, which you saw earlier. And then um, it fires off an event. That event, which is down here, fires off the connection to asterisk because then we'll have this information over here, which is the username and password. Um, and then we connect, all, or when we, um, once AR, ARI connects up, we fire another event that says ARI is ready, or we fire error. So we have error handlers below that handle those errors. Um, and on ready, it, it, it's, we, we um, again, at its basic form, we do, this, uh, we do the ARI kind of listener. And when stasis starts, so stasis starts, when a, when a channel comes into ARI, it fires a, a stasis start event. And that's when you know how to, you know, that you're ready to play with stuff. Um, so, and then on, on this for the blacklist, so the ideal here is when it, when it comes in here, we ask, the, um, we ask our API if the, if the name and the number are correct, right? And the args here would be the, um, would be the blacklist number. So it says, it, you know, blacklist 12. Is blacklist 12, um, does it accept this name and number? And the, uh, the blacklist will come back, and it'll give you a, um, a response of true, or it'll give you a direction to go. So if it gives a direction to go, that means that you're either blacklisted or whitelisted, right? So you should go somewhere else. Um, and so if you're going somewhere else, you'll see in here that it's kind of the important, if you ignore everything else, kind of the important thing with the dial plan applications is this continue in dial plan. Because what that's telling it um, is basically get out of here, get out of, get out of stasis, get out of ARI, and move on. So everything is still in the dial plan and free PBX, obviously. Nothing, just, nothing stays in ARI. Um, so what we're doing right now is just routing. And so we continue in dial plan. If you continue in dial plan without, without the context extension and priority, it just goes to context plus one. So in our case, we're coming into the from PSTN. And when we come into from PSTN, we're going to process through the Stasis app. And then it could either just go to, to um, you know, context plus one. So if it's at, you know, from PS10 five, it'll go to from PS10 six. It just moves on. Um, if it decides that it needs to send it somewhere else, then it will go to whatever context extension and priority we send it to. And now we're out of from PSTN, but we're also out of the ARI app. We've moved on. So in free PBX world, because we still have so much in dial plan, continue in dial plan, that uh, function method there is really important for us. So we can go into a stasis app and then go right back to free PBX dial plan. And right, because right now we're just using, um, essentially with the dial plan apps, we're just using ARI for um, data processing, manipulation, routing, mm -hmm. right? Um, you can also do a, um, which I took out of here because I thought this was cleaner. Um, you, can set, uh, you can set a channel variable and then continue, and then in your dial plan, if, you, if you're writing it out, you can look for that channel variable. So if you don't want to route, but you want to know information, you can set it in a channel variable and pull it out later in your, in your, uh, the, your other dial plan. That probably would have been a lot cooler with a demo, huh? Well, what do you have to do? Just assign it back to stasis? figure out my, what the uh, phone number is on this. Well, here, you probably want to show them and actually do it here. Uh, is it? No. Do it in this one. 
If you guys run an external application, this is actually how you, in FreePBX, how you, I don't want this. How you would actually add and go and talk to, uh, okay, we're just gonna go. Your Stasis app, so let me do this, extensions, additional, custom. Oh wait, extensions.custom, what is it again? It's extensions.custom. We're going to come in here and add uh, a context. So from internal custom. It would be PSTN custom because we're coming from the outside. Oh, okay. That's why I was just hooking into the DID. Oh, yeah. You just do it your way then here. I was just going to dial from a soft phone, but yeah, I see what you're saying. There's been a lot of audio issues with um, actually connecting to our service because of the grand internet here. Yeah, we actually have like one-way audio for most things unless we're doing an internal server. We haven't really figured it out, so. So James is just going to basically splice into the dial plan here manually and then just do a dial plan reload. Obviously, if you do this in real free PBX and then you reload in the GUI, it will erase all that, right? But uh, that's what happened here. We do this actually for testing. This is just normal asterisk dial plan. We just come in here, write it in here, and then we go to asterisk and just type uh, either core reload or dial plan reload, right? So it's good for debugging that way. So that's how you start a Stasis app, by the way. So anything that connects to asterisk ARI, the the app, it's the Stasis, and then the application name, right? And then so arguments. If you want to have an argument, it right. You know. It's just comma, 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 comma for the arguments, yeah. Um. So now he's going to restart the app, right? It registers itself to asterisk. Oh. You're going to want to probably split the pane, right? Yeah. So that blacklist app is registered to asterisk, and now what happens is when we dial come in on that PSTN uh, route there, um, it's going to go, it's going to see Stasis, and then it's going to try to talk to the Stasis app, right? If the Stasis app doesn't exist, um, it will just continue in dial plan, I believe, right? It doesn't hang up, right? If the Stasis app, like, wasn't connected, I'm looking at them. That's yeah, I what think I thought. That was, that's been fixed, because it used to, it used to do horrible things. Yeah, you get a, a dial plan variable gets set to right, because it used to hang up, right? Or something. Right, right, yeah. So that's worth the magic here. So you can see right now it's going through. And it's just, it's going to start reading off stuff. So we'll. Well, did it go actually hit your app? Yeah, oh. I'll go, go back up here. Well, you also have oh, your, mis broke. your mistype there. As is common, typos, right? Fun times. Um, It still goes here. So obviously, what I, what came back didn't have didn't have the information, so it just kind of continued on. But you'll see in the dial plan here, um, it actually hit stasis. You'll see where it hit the stasis. You saw the blacklist and the arguments that came through to it. Um, I wonder if I dumped the response in there, so that might have been useful. No, 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 you're spelling response wrong. No, but I mean, I'm just wondering if I dumped it. Oh, okay. Right. There you go. It's just continue in dial plan. He just needs to fix that one thing. Um, and then, oh, I, I did. So I dumped the response right. here. Oh, I don't need to dump the response, though, because it's not going to give me anything back useful. Um, just, just delete that and save it so you can show them. Sorry, brain dead. And then obviously, when you make a change, it doesn't update real time, so you have to restart the app um, to get the changes in there. This is kind of anticlimactic too, but it just kind of shows in the dial plan what's going on. Right, so you actually had your numbers blacklisted then, right? Because you're going to SS no service, <clears throat> correct? No, I think it, just, it was just broken. All 
Oh, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Um, but anyway, same thing. You, you can see in the you can see in the dial plan where it went to stasis. Can you? Right, right there, you there. see where it went yeah. to stasis. Um, now, if we had right now, or actually, you can. That's kind of something you see there. So, the only thing I sent back up here because it was hard coded is hello, and that's why it's going to SS no service. So, so it sent when it went forward. It set that extension, it's still in from PSTN, it set it to hello, with a lot of L's. Because he, he did continue in dial plan, he set the extension to hello, and that's where it's going in asterisk, right? So what he did in this simple, explan this simple thing here, actually, if you take uh, the blacklist module that he wrote apart, um, let's do it in nano. Um, oops. Where is the code? Here it is. No, you have the nano. I know, and I keep doing that. I know, because I keep thinking. Or Vim it. OK. So if we take this apart, right, we're actually coming in to uh, asterisk, right? And then we're just connecting to ARI here. But what's cool about this app, even though if you, if you think about it outside the terms of blacklist, we're taking a call in, right? And then we have this fetch right here, which we're calling an external resource, which then can tell us where to go in the dial plan. And this so you could be anything, too. It right. doesn't have to call free PBX. You could take it apart. And you could have it call any REST API you have somewhere on the internet for any CNUM, and you could actually route calls that way. So instead of going into custom for DIDs, right, or if you have thousands of DIDs, let's say, you could take this simple app for thousands of DIDs you have coming into your system and then route them however you want on your web server. And you, from your web server, you can then return back uh, on the response line, right, where you want it to go in the dial plan. So let's say you had thousands of DIDs, and you want uh, DIDs that end in 555 or 55x, right, any number, to go to a certain agent or something. You could do it this way, right? Just call your own web server, have a list on there in whatever language you want, return a response, and then you just continue in dial plan, right? Way simpler than I think the old ways of doing it in free PBX, which is like with the custom comp file, and then writing dial plan, and then having to remember that it's there, free PBX ever changes, right? Um, this simple thing would just route your calls like that. So, and we'll put this up online because I think it's actually really useful in its current form to just call any API you want just from this command, this line right here, which is this right there. Okay, so that was a quick overview um, of how we kind of started using ARI. We've done some other stuff internally with it so far. Um, and we're hoping to release some more open source stuff with it, especially this stuff that James has posted. We're going to put it online. Did you want to switch um, back to the slides, too? It has the kind of what they need to look at. Yeah, but we're getting near the end here. That's why Josh uh, got up. <clears throat> so anyways, you guys have any questions? Yes. We've, we've talked about it. Like a good example might be um, uh, like Dial Party's AGI. Right. The one problem that, that there is with um, ARI, it's not a problem that they've done. It's to, we have to run a process in the background. So we have to monitor that process. And what happens when that process crashes, right? Um, years ago, I think in 12, when ARI first came out, if the process crashed and it hit stasis in the dial plan, then asterisk would just hang up, right? As Josh said, it's been resolved. Um, but moving that stuff to daemons that are running in the background, I think is more, there's more performance to that than launching an AGI, right? Um, we already are running into bottlenecks with AGIs on large systems. So in the future, yes. It's all about what do we do if the, the process can't start, right? And right now, we put most of our processes in a monitoring app um, that will restart them. But it's like, what do you do if that monitoring app can't restart? And that's kind of like where we're at right now. We're trying to figure out what would we do with that in the future. And the other thing that slowed our adoption. The what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would work too, right? Because we would get the failure state, and then we could just run back to that. Yeah, that's a good point. The, yeah. uh, the primary hiccup or the holdback that's, that's, that's kind of held up our adoption is Asterisk 11. So there was a couple bugs in Asterisk 11 that held a lot of our customers back with queues. Um, they were resolved uh, right after our 14 release. So as of 14, we su still support Asterisk 11. Um, so we, had to, we still supported Asterisk 11 as of our last release. Because they fixed that bug, now in our next release, we can, we can kill Asterisk 11 support, which means we universally know people have ARI. So right. that's been the problem. You have to have 13 plus, or technically 12 plus, but nobody uses 12. So you have to have 13 plus to use ARI. 
And because we supported 11, we would be taking you know, features away from people by using ARI. Right. So now we're in the future. Yay. Any other Welcome questions? Welcome to four years ago. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, guys.